Moving right along, boys. Here's the Mazda engine. Got her just about stripped. Got the valve covers off, all the accessories. We just got to take off the front timing cover and motor mount. And kind of where my sprays are and my yingling is the line. This is Ford. This is Mazda. Hopefully my damn table doesn't give out again. Um, yeah, let's start a GoFundMe for a better garage setup for Benny Boy, but it's all good. So, here's the harness, and honestly, it's not that many plugs. So, it's kind of a shame that there isn't a uh, standalone ECU for this car yet that I'm aware of. I've heard that's in part of the, um, or due to the immobilizer in the cluster or something like that, but I'll have to look into what ECU options are available. Wait, wait, never mind. I don't need any of that because this is just my daily driver. That's right. Never mind. But anyhow... Got the harnesses out, starting to move some stuff over. It's feeling good. We're going to keep on a truck and start moving parts. And then this guy will just be for spare parts until the car is running tip-top Magoo. Then we will send him off to the scrapyard, maybe. Or make a table out of it. I don't know. But that is the update. Didn't want to go too nuts on you. Next, like I said, we'll be getting that timing chain off. Check the crock. Air uh, timing cover off. Moving it over, Squirt Smart TV, and we'll be styling. All right. All right, we got the timing cover off, and I think I see what happened. So, can't really see it with a naked eye, but like we figured, the tensioner seems to have failed. So, if I jump on this chain here, look at this, I can just easily move it by hand. So, extrapolate that when this engine's running. That's what's going on in there, enough to where the um, the cam slipped. So if I go over to the other side of the engine with the tensioner that has not failed, look at this. I literally can't squeeze it, even if I tried. We're on this side again. So safe to say that's what happened, and that is the side where we found the broken rockers. So yeah, I think that's what happened, boys. Um, we're doing it. We're doing good here. We got to switch over a couple things. I don't know if I have to switch over this reluctor wheel. All I know is I'm not even supposed to touch it, but according to the guide, I have to switch it over. So I'm going to go ahead and just switch this guy over with that one. Um, and then I'm going to switch over, you know, you get the corresponding sensors. So at least that way, um, I know that the reluctor wheel is going to run with the same uh, sensor that the, the same Hall effect sensor it's always run with so that'll be a little peace of mind at a minimum I gotta look up top here yeah I don't think I'm gonna yeah I'm obviously not gonna mess with these but those um the new cam sensors will come with that timing cover so now basically we're just gonna switch over the reluctor wheel like I said and then we're gonna peel out the old gasket clean this up in good shape and Slap it on over there. All right, update boys. Got the valve covers switched over. All new gaskets and some goop. And it is coming right together. I'm just gonna do a final little torque on the valve cover. And then I'll probably put the new spark plugs in, or I might wait on that and just switch, switch right over to putting the accessories on. But we are getting closer and closer because once we put the plugs, the accessories on and then we only need to put on the intake manifold and then the headers update valve covers are on harmonic uh balancer or damper from the other motor is on these motors are kind of just becoming one now but this is the ford motor with the mazda parts on it and one of these things you have to do before you put your power steering pump back on and whatnot it's easier to get to Right there is the oil sender. So this guy tells you, tells the dash if you have um, oil pressure or not. So apparently the one on the Ford engine is backwards, like polarity, to the uh, Mazda one. So basically, when you have oil pressure, it'll tell you you do not. So we're going to go ahead. That takes a 21 millimeter deep socket. We're going to go ahead and take that off and grab the oil sender from this engine. And then we will continue putting our accessories on, and I think that will be it for tonight.
Holy moly, he saved. All right, Benny boy. Coming to you with what is looking more and more like an engine every minute, mister. We got this old block almost totally stripped. And up here, what used to be mostly Ford is now mostly Mazda on the outside. So I got the valve covers, got all the accessories put back on. We're friggin' styling, mister. Alternator, all that good shit. So, new gaskets all around. This thing's going to be friggin' banging on all six cylinders. I'll tell you what. Banging on all of them. So, all I got to say about that is I don't, I don't exactly know how this belt is routed. Ask old friggin' old Kate back there. See what, she's, what she thinks about it. But, I'm going to leave that for tomorrow. Get the belt routed. New plugs. And then, boys, I think it's stupid not to friggin' Hook it up to the transmission. I don't know if I showed you earlier. But look at this freaking flywheel. Look at how refreshed it is. Happy I didn't freaking do it myself all ghetto style, you know. Does remind me I need to put on the wire and harness. But for the amount of wires that go on to one of these goddamn things, that ain't bad. I'll tell you that. So tomorrow morning, spark plugs. I'm going to gap on my gas. Not a big deal on this motor, but they're like $1.30 a piece. Anyways, gap them. I'm going to slap the friggin' clutch on, and then I think it's stupid not to change the throwout bearing and put the friggin' tranny on, and this thing's going back in the friggin' car tomorrow, boys. I'll tell you that. 